hopefully it's quiet enough outside today that I can do a little bit of a video introduction. Today I want to do a video, just a short video, on charging power, so the amount of kilowatts that we're actually using to charge our home storage battery. And my thought process is being, before I bought the battery, I look at the specifications and the data sheets, and you're looking at how much power you can get out of it, how much power you can get into it, and the more power you have, the better. But, so it seems, now that I've got used to this battery, and now I'm experimenting with how to control it and use it for my best advantage, I'm finding that actually charging at lower rates is more beneficial. So the sort of thing that I've noticed is the more I do research, the more I understand that batteries generally don't like um, things that cause them stress, that cause additional degradation. So charging them at higher rates isn't necessarily good for the battery. And charging in cold conditions, the battery is probably going to limit the amount of charging rate that you get anyway. So charging at a lower rate can be good. Now, in the last few weeks, I've been noticing that I've been exporting a huge amount of energy back to the grid. So it's made me wonder, why am I charging just in the start of the day? So as soon as the sun comes up and the solar starts, um, why am I trying to charge the battery then? The battery's not empty. It's still got over 50% of capacity left in the battery. 20% depth of discharge. I've still got 30% available. So why am I trying to charge it then in competition with me cooking my breakfast and making a cup of tea and doing all those sort of things because what I've noticed with the battery system I have the pure drive energy battery and others that I've looked at if we look at this chart here from give energy you can see exactly the same issue that you get grid draw while charging because it's trying to charge the battery and balance it to not export any and not import any it's trying to balance it to zero at the same time as maximizing the amount of solar you get but based on fluctuations of the solar and the fluctuations of demand um, in your house and also the algorithms that it's using you get some grid draw some more than others so what i started to realize was if you get less grid draw that you can see here in this chart from the moment you get an export you get an excess of solar energy so you've got more than you need to do the charging then you're not getting any grid draw at all well why not leave yourself a margin why not um, not use as much of the energy as you possibly can? So in my energy terms, set an export margin. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So what you're basically doing is saying, don't charge as fast as you can now, charge more slowly over a longer period of time. So yes, there'll be more competition for that resource, that solar resource over a longer period of time, but you'll already have left a margin and therefore there'll be more available for other things to use instantaneously. So I thought I'd try that as a test, and that's what this video is about, trying that as a test, looking at one particular day, yesterday, um, which was actually more sunny than today, so it was more favourable conditions yesterday, and we had a fair amount of grid draw, you know, we did use a tenth of a kilowatt hour in the day, and what I intend to show you is how that went up over time, and how the actual grid energy was used during that charging process of the battery, mostly. So today what I'm doing is I've set the limit of charging down to 350 watts so instead of charging at say 18 sorry instead of charging at 1.8 kilowatts or 2 kilowatts or whatever this battery can do i honestly can't remember what it can do at the moment it's 2 point something kilowatts i think is the maximum charge rate it will do but anyway i've said it's to 350 watts an absolute tiny amount of energy and the idea being as the sun comes around and the sun comes up then there's going to be a lot more than 350 watts of um, energy available so my eddy device can use that for hot water, my house can use that, and we'll give some back to the grid. So instead of having huge amounts of export given away later in the day, and using all my consumption first thing in the day, I'm going to spread my consumption out over a longer period in the day, and use some of that export later in the day. And it makes me think as well, you know, it would be nice to be able to turn the battery off. It would be nice to be able to say on a time schedule, don't charge between 6am and, I don't know, 10am, and leave that time period free for other things and then when the sun's up i'm typically bringing in more than two kilowatts of solar energy by 10 o'clock then then i could turn the battery charging on and charge it at that point when i'm not in competition with anything else and when there's enough solar energy available so having that control and flexibility is good i'm trying to simulate that by setting a lower charge rate and that is available on this victron inverter it's available with the pure drive energy solution that i've got not available on all batteries. Some don't give you the control at all to do these things. 
So anyway, let's see uh, the results that I've had from yesterday and today. So we start here, six o'clock in the morning, we're using 24 watt hours of energy from midnight until six in the morning. And the grid energy is coming from the fluctuation in the grid as it's going up and down above the zero mark. The house load is a steady house load, it's probably less than 100 watts, but the battery is looking after that. And then just after six o'clock, we've got the sun coming up and solar panels becoming active. And here we can see that we're getting between 30 and 40 watts of solar generation. As time progresses, what we're going to see is the amount of input energy go up, but we're also going to see the amount of solar generation go up and the amount we're consuming going up. So in blue, that's the amount we're consuming. So by seven o'clock, an hour later, we've now imported 30 watt hours and the amount of generation has gone up to just under 300 watts on this graph. And we're consuming it all, charging the battery. Another half an hour on, more grid import, up to 36 watt hours, more generation. Another hour on almost and another seven watt hours added. So that's seven watts of electricity over the entire hour being continuously consumed. That's what we're adding. Not a huge amount, but it's all adding up. Time wise, we're not a lot further on in this picture, but we've jumped up to 60 watt hours now, 0 0.06 of a kilowatt hour. So those extra 17 watt hours that we consumed over a small period of time, that was us making a couple of cups of coffee. That was all, but it drew some grid energy. What I'm interested in is if we were charging at a lower rate and had some export, would we be consuming as much for those tasks? Would there be as much competition? And 70 watt hours. Jumping ahead a couple of hours, the graph has now changed quite a lot. We've got a lot more solar energy coming through. We've now got green, not blue. That's indicating we're generating the solar energy, but we're not consuming it anymore. So the eddy device has heated the hot water. It's up to temperature. The battery is now fully charged and we've still only used 74 watt hours. So we're not consuming any more energy. Now we're exporting it and not consuming it. And we're not fluctuating on that limit of trying to balance it at zero. Jump ahead again to the end of the day, we've now consumed 78 watt hours, so not very much more for the rest of the day. Mostly we've got green there, so we're not consuming as much of the energy as we're generating. There's a huge amount of export, and you can just start to see the consumption starting to come back in at 6, 7 o'clock at night, where the amount of solar power we're producing is now getting close to the amount we're actually using from the house. And then with no solar energy being produced, the house load is picked up completely by the battery. So we're not charging anymore, but we are continually discharging. This seems to be pretty good and we don't consume a lot more energy all the way through to midnight. Only up to 96 watt hours for the entire 24 hour period. Let's see how that differs. Changing the charge limit and setting only a 350 watt import. So we're going to spread that blue out over a longer period of time. So the day starts pretty differently, that um, we're only importing 12 watt hours by 7.30. It's not to do with the settings, it's just that overnight from midnight until when the sun first came up, we actually used less grid energy for the same base house load. So it's the same settings, the same battery, same everything. It's just that obviously the battery found it easier to balance closer to zero than it did yesterday. The chart also looks very different first thing in the morning. Yes, it's a more overcast day today, but also there's a lot more green straight away. We're not consuming all of the energy available. Both the My Energy Eddy device has an export limit set of 200 watts, and also the battery is now set to only use a maximum of 350 watts. So anything above the 350, and anything that the Eddy is trying to use as well, we'll still always be sending out at least 200 watts. We get our first red spike of the day, that's grid import, but look at the numbers, it's only gone up by two watt hours. So actually this graph is visually showing a large grid spike, but actually it wasn't a large grid spike at all, it was quite small. What we were doing is boiling some water for a cup of tea in the morning. Exactly the same as yesterday. A bit more time passes and we're now up to 17 watt hours, so just three watt hours added. And again, we're still heating the hot water slowly and we're also charging the battery slowly. Again, reminding you that the difference between the days, yesterday was sunnier, today is more overcast, there's less solar available today. So I'd expect it to be harder with more competition for the energy to maintain zero grid use. Interesting here that we're already up to 38 watt hours, so a little bit of a jump, 
again making coffee so two cups of coffee and we've got the same sort of increase in import from the grid so that process hasn't changed we still are importing from the grid even though there's more energy available creeping up another three watt hours up to 41 and a couple more up to 43 we're now starting to increase the amount of solar generation too the overcast day is starting to clear a little bit and now by 11 o'clock we're up to 45 watt hours but what we can see here is the blue has disappeared so we're now exporting more energy than we're actually generating so the battery is still charging but the hot water well that's not anymore we're up to temperature and if you're wondering why we can't see the charging of the battery here showing up in blue it's simply because i have a second solar array that this chart can't see so we are generating more energy than this and we are consuming it but consumption is a derived number so solar edge in this chart here just doesn't know about that extra energy and therefore can't calculate that there is some being used this chart from my energy shows it quite well that we're only putting out uh, 300 watts uh, rounded down to the battery but we are able to put out 2.2 kilowatts to the hot water and we're still exporting 200 watts to the grid so that does show the configuration that i'm using at quarter past 12 we we're only at 84 percent state of charge on the battery whereas normally by 9 9 30 10 o'clock even we'd be at 100 percent we will have fully charged the battery as well as the heat the hot water Grid use is still going up now at 49 watt hours, but will it be any better than yesterday by the end of the day when we've finished charging the battery? And I really don't know what the result's going to be because I am recording this live. I don't know what the result is at the end of the day. So it will be interesting to see whether we have saved any energy or whether we haven't. 74 watt hours was the target for having finished charging the battery and finished the day but also remember we were 12 watt hours ahead at the start of the day so 62 i think is the target hot water is back up to temperature for the second time so again we're only putting out between 300 and 400 watts as i said it's set to 350 watts and the rest is going out to the grid it's so very tempting at this stage knowing that there's uh, an excess of solar energy to increase that charge limit from 350 put it up to something like 800 and make the battery charge faster to get it over and done with faster but of course i've got to be patient and wait it out ah right okay um well this test isn't working out quite as I planned. Our teenager has just come downstairs, decided to cook herself some lunch, turn the oven on, microwave, hob, and just about every other electrical device possible. And yes, of course, uh, we didn't have a lot of sun either. So we've got some extra grid consumption that we didn't have yesterday. So the comparison between yesterday and today, that's out of the window. Good news is, I haven't used a lot of energy from the grid, of course. It's coped with all of that. The battery's provided the power, but this test being like for like to see what the difference is well that's not going to work today is it not now so i don't think there's any point in carrying on to see what the result is for the end of the day because the difference between the two days is now skewed we've got a difference anyway hopefully what i've said so far and what we've seen so far has been of some interest even though it doesn't conclude anything but i think i'll just leave it there anyway thanks for watching hope there was something there that you enjoyed and found useful and uh, there'll be more tests hopefully ones that conclude a little bit better coming soon and now of course i get to decide whether to scrap the entire thing or whether i do post this actually public on youtube see you again soon bye for now So with the test concluded, yep, I've increased the charge rate. So we're now charging full speed at 2.3 kilowatts.